Hello everyone, we're diving into Trellis.2, Microsoft's new groundbreaking open-source AI model that's redefining how we create high-fidelity 3D assets. Developed by researchers from Microsoft Research, Tsinghua University, and others, Trellis.2 is a massive 4 billion parameter image to 3D model. It takes a single image as input and generates stunning, fully textured 3D meshes with physically-based rendering, or PBR, materials. That means realistic base colors, metallic surfaces, roughness, and even transparency for photorealistic relighting under any lighting condition. What sets Trellis.2 apart is its innovative O-Voxel representation, a sparse, field-free voxel structure that handles arbitrary topologies like open surfaces, non-manifold geometry, thin structures, and enclosed interiors without the limitations of traditional methods. Combined with a sparse compression VAE, it compresses high-resolution assets up to 1,536 cubed into an ultra-compact latent space, enabling fast generation, just seconds on a powerful GPU for detailed production-ready models. Compared to similar 3D generative AI models like Tripo SR, Dream Gaussian, or Large Gaussian model, stands out in several key ways. Many competitors rely on ISO surface fields or Gaussian splatting. Trellis.2 breaks free from those constraints, delivering superior fidelity, full PBR texturing, and arbitrary surface support, all without heavy rendering or optimization steps. It's more efficient, scalable, and versatile for diverse assets, from organic characters to hard surface objects. While official ComfyUI custom nodes are not yet supporting this AI model, but there's a custom node for this, so we're going through how to run Trellis.2 locally, from setup to generating your own 3D asset. First of all, this model you could say it's medium-sized AI model if you're using a consumer PC. It clocks in at about 16 gigabytes in file size, and I think this is pretty cool, especially since Microsoft rarely releases open-source models. Just the fact that they've created a 3D model that looks this promising and that it's an open-source generative AI model with comfy UI custom nodes you can actually run? That's exciting. So, I'm going to use the one I just found online that's available to run with Trellis.2. Here's what I'll do. First, you can follow the instructions here to install it using ComfyUI Manager. Second, we'll load up some example workflows and see how it performs in a real, practical way using ComfyUI. Since I haven't installed this yet, I'm going to use ComfyUI Manager, just like they mention on the GitHub page. We'll use the search bar here. You'll see this one. Just click Install. That's the only thing you need to do. Select one of the latest versions and wait for the download. And we are going to restart. So there is some required dependency that is currently running on the back end in Comfy UI. So one thing worth to mention is that in the meanwhile, I am download installing this. It has the executions from the script of the custom node. It prompts me if I'm from the window to allow this execution code to run. So I just click allow and it has executed script of the comfy UI running its executions and detecting my system, etc. And also downloading something that is necessary for the custom node dependency to run in here, as you can see those libraries for 3D. So overall, all the thing is installed for the status in here. And something cool is that it has also helped me to install flash attentions that find my system that is using CUDA 12.8 as well as detecting all the things that necessary and find a wheel that is suitable match for my system. Let's see if this is really happen. So we are jumping back to the Comfy UI interface and we have to refresh our Comfy UI. In the Trellis.2 custom nodes, you'll find example workflows, just like many other custom nodes do for demos. So I'm going to create an empty workflow here and drag one in. This one's called the Geometry Workflow. The first time you run this workflow, it'll download two models. I've already downloaded them, but you'll need to wait a bit while it pulls those files from the Hugging Face repo, specifically the ones in the CKPTS folder, based on your selected resolution. For example, I'm using the 1024 cascade resolution, so it downloads those corresponding files. You'll also see download info in the command prompt window, showing exactly what files you're receiving. The first time I ran this, 
I got an error. It said the Pyrinder module wasn't found. That's just a library dependency needed for creating 3D objects with this node. So for troubleshooting, if you run into this too, you can just run pip install Pyrinder to install the dependency. It'll download and install the files, and as you can see, it succeeded. Then you can restart Comfy UI again. There are a few things to watch out for the first time you run this. Dependency installations might cause errors when you first try the example workflow. Also, one more thing. There are three example workflows in the folder. You'll notice there's another custom node used to render the 3D mesh generated by this AI model. You can either use that node or other custom nodes to render and display your image to 3D mesh. Another way is what I did earlier. Use the render preview, which gives you multiple rendered images like in this example. Either way, you'll see the output, but it's better to have a proper 3D mesh preview for clearer presentation. To do that, go to Install Missing Custom Nodes, click the button, and it'll show you the specific custom node pack you need. Just install it the usual way, and restart again. And that's all you need to do with this custom node. After the download completes, refresh Comfy UI, and you'll see the issue is gone. No more red error boxes. Now I'm running it again. After all files are downloaded and everything's fixed, head over to the command prompt window, and you'll see it's enabling flash attention and downloading version 2.2 for you. If you don't already have flash attention, say, if you've used other AI models like WAN 2.1 or WAN 2.2 that support flash attention in attention mode, you can actually use this Comfy UI custom node as a shortcut. It'll auto install flash attention into your Comfy UI virtual environment. I had it installed before, but after updating CUDA, I hadn't reinstalled it. So this was a great chance to let it auto download the right wheel for my system without me having to pick it manually. As you can see, I wanted to verify the runtime because here you can see all the processing happening during sampling and 3D mesh generation. Back in the comfy UI interface, there it is, super detailed. This is actually my first time running this AI model in comfy UI using this custom node. Just look at the detail. Even the tiny gears and internal components from the original image were generated accurately. The input image is this one from their examples, and it looks pretty cool. Imagine if you have a product or anything you want to turn into a 3D mesh, you could capture it from multiple angles, do a full 360 degree turn, and bring it back into your workflow. No need to train a product LoRa model or even video LoRa models. You can get really nice model angles using this method. Or if you're a 3D artist, this is a great way to save tons of time building objects like this from scratch. For the trellis render preview, just link it to a preview image node and you'll get multiple angle renders. As you can see here, even though it's not super clear, it's only 512 resolution after all you still get a nearly 360 degree view of the object with multiple images generated from different angles. Now the next workflow we'll try is the texture one. Here we've got a Canon 3D rendered from their example workflow files, and I'll be testing it with these settings. If you still haven't successfully installed flash attention, you can switch back to Xformers, especially if you're on older NVIDIA GPUs that can use Xformers or just use the standard attention mode in Comfy UI like SDPA. It'll be slower, but it'll still run. All right, let's wait for the result and see what we get. Back to the output, it worked. The first time you load this, it downloads the texture models too. Then the image to shape process starts sampling using the shape model. A few things to note about the Microsoft Trellis, it includes separate shape models, texture models, and we will also try out background rev move model. Honestly, I've tested other 3D generative AI models before, and this one looks pretty nice compared to what I've seen, like some older Hun Yuan 3D, and even the Tripo SR, a previous open source collaboration between Tripo 3D and Stable Diffusion from way back. Those just didn't give me this level of detail, especially from alternate angles. In this case, my input image is just a single side view of the Canon, super detailed, but the AI had zero info about the back or other sides. 
yet it still generated something reasonable for those unseen parts. So I'd say, give it a pass. It's a 4 billion parameter model, and as a hands-off local 3D generative AI solution, it's pretty impressive. I mean, what do you expect, right? It's generating something like this, something that might normally take hours and hours to model in traditional 3D software. Next up is the Remove Background Workflow, which isolates objects so you can turn them into standalone 3D meshes or place them into scenes. This is super practical. Take a photo of anything, remove the background, and convert it into a 3D object. There are tons of use cases, like building image datasets with multi-angle views of real-world objects. Let's wait for this one. As I mentioned, the background removal step also requires model files to download. And right here, you can see it just finished downloading and is now loading. Here's the generated 3D mesh of the bike. Since we're using the mesh, this remesh node receives the data and generates the preview you see here. For 3D folks, you probably already know how to use this. My 3D artist friends would be thrilled to get mesh files like this. They'd add their own textures, colors, and finishes. But for me, I'll most likely stick to the geometry plus texture workflow in my own projects. I think that's more common for AI or tech users. Grab an image, get the texture and color info baked in, and export it as a GLB file. You can also generate multiple angles to build a custom object dataset or drop it into image editing models like Quant Image Edit and composite it into different scenes. Take this bike example. Once I have the 3D mesh, I can feed that shape into the texture pipeline, link it to the texture model, and create a fully textured version. Finally, I'll connect the conditioning from here into the texture mesh custom node, exactly like we did in the geometry texture workflow. So in this workflow, we'll use that textured mesh based on the background removed bike object. And right here, we're using GLB export files. From this point, we get both the mesh and the voxel grid. And finally, the output. We'll use the native Comfy UI 3D and animation preview node already built in. All you need to do is connect this to the model file, just like this. With the background removal workflow, you'll also get the remeshed base object. Then you can take that shape output and apply the texture model to it. Run it one more time, and you'll get a textured mesh object. After rendering the textured mesh, Here's the preview with color on the object. Now, it's not perfect color-wise, but you at least get some coloration. And from there, you could take different angles and re-render with other image generation models to refine the bike even further. One thing worth mentioning, it actually matches the original object's colors pretty well. For example, if the bike has red frames and a logo on the front suspension, it replicates those details pretty accurately. So far, I'm surprised by this 3D AI model. It's relatively small, yet it does the job pretty nicely, especially compared to other AI models that generate 3D objects. I'd say Microsoft really did a great job with this one. Definitely check it out if you're into 3D generative models. It's especially great for people who don't know 3D, like me. I don't use 3D at all, but the first time I saw this AI model, I was hooked. It lets me create 3D objects like this and I'm already thinking of ideas for combining it with image generation or even video generation models. That's it for this video. There will be more exciting AI models to play with even holidays. I'll see you in the next one. See ya!